You ever just catch yourself scanning a room when you walk in, even when you're somewhere completely safe, like your friend's house or a coffee shop you've been to a hundred times? Your eyes are darting around, checking exits, noting who's sitting where, almost like you're expecting something to go wrong. Most people don't realize how exhausting this is. Your brain is running a background security program 24-7, and it's been running the same outdated software for thousands of years. Here's the wild part. Your brain literally thinks you're still living in a world where a rustling bush could mean death. But you're not. You're living in a world where the biggest threat you'll face today is probably a difficult email or an awkward conversation. And once you understand why your brain does this, you'll never see your anxious thoughts the same way again. Let's talk about something no one teaches you in school. Your brain has a built-in alarm system that's stuck in the on position. Think about it. One harsh comment from your boss can completely derail your entire day. You'll replay it during lunch, on your drive home, maybe even when you're trying to fall asleep. But that genuine compliment your coworker gave you this morning? You probably forgot about it by noon. This isn't a character flaw. This isn't you being too sensitive or overthinking everything. This is your brain doing exactly what it was designed to do, except it's using Stone Age software to handle Space Age problems. Your brain is like a smoke detector that can't tell the difference between burnt toast and an actual fire. Both trigger the same blaring alarm, the same rush of adrenaline, the same danger, danger response. Here's where it gets interesting. The system actually kept your ancestors alive. When a shadow moving in your peripheral vision could be a predator, when strangers often meant trouble, when one wrong decision could mean you don't see tomorrow. Being hypervigilant wasn't anxiety, it was survival. But here's the thing. Your brain never got the memo that the game changed. You know what's wild? Your brain doesn't just notice negative things more. It literally stores them differently. Negative experiences get burned into your memory with HD clarity, while positive moments get saved in grainy, low-resolution files that fade quickly. Think about your worst day at work versus your best day at work. I bet you can recall every painful detail of that worst day. What people said, how it felt, even what you were wearing. But that amazing day? It's probably just a warm, fuzzy feeling with maybe one or two specific details. This is called negativity bias, and it's not just affecting your memories. It's hijacking your entire reality. Your brain has become like a news channel that only reports disasters. Not because disasters are the only thing happening, but because disasters are the only thing it's programmed to notice and remember. And here's where this gets really insidious. This constant threat scanning creates what psychologists call cognitive distortions. These are mental shortcuts your brain uses to process information quickly, except they're all calibrated for a dangerous world that doesn't exist anymore. Let's be honest, when was the last time you got good news and your brain immediately started looking for what could go wrong with it? Or when you accomplished something and instead of celebrating you started worrying about how you'd mess up next time? That's not you being realistic. That's your brain running catastrophe simulations because it's convinced that preparation for disaster is more important than enjoying the present moment. But here's the part that changes everything. Once you understand what's happening in your brain when it does this, you can actually do something about it. Your brain operates like it's constantly tuning into different radio stations. Right now, you're probably tuned into Threat FM, all anxiety, all the time. But there are other stations broadcasting. Reality Radio, Gratitude Grove, Present Moment Playlist. The problem isn't that Threat FM exists, you need that station sometimes. The problem is you've been stuck on it so long, you forgot you have a dial. When your brain tells you everything is going wrong, what it's actually saying is, I've detected some uncertainty, and uncertainty used to mean death, so I'm going to treat this text from your friend that just says, hey, can we talk, like it's a saber-toothed tiger. Here's what's actually happening when you catastrophize. Your brain takes a small piece of incomplete information, runs it through its ancient, assume the worst filter, and presents you with a full horror movie as if it's a documentary. But here's the beautiful thing, your brain is incredibly adaptable. The same neuroplasticity that locked you into these patterns can unlock you from them. Think of your brain like a snow globe that someone keeps shaking. All those swirling thoughts and worries are just sediment that's been stirred up. When you stop shaking the globe, when you stop feeding the anxiety with more uh, what-if thinking, everything settles and you can see clearly again. The goal isn't to never have another anxious thought. That's like trying to never have weather. The goal is to change your relationship with those thoughts so they don't run your life. So here's the simple shift that changes everything. Instead of asking, what if something goes wrong, start asking, what if I'm safe right now? I know that sounds almost too simple, but stay with me. Your brain has been practicing worst case scenario thinking for so long, it's become automatic. But what if you practice best case scenario thinking, or even just realistic case scenario thinking? Here's a technique that comes straight from cognitive behavioral therapy, and you can start using it today. 
When you catch yourself in a spiral, and the key word there is catch, pause and ask yourself three questions. First, what evidence do I actually have that this terrible thing will happen? Not feelings, not hunches, not I just know, actual evidence. Second, what evidence do I have that everything might actually be fine? Force your brain to look for data it's been ignoring. Third, what would I tell a good friend who was having this exact same worry? We're often much kinder and more rational when we're helping others than when we're trapped in our own heads. But here's where it gets really powerful. You don't just want to challenge the thoughts, you want to teach your brain what safety feels like in your body. Your brain doesn't just think you're in danger, it feels like you're in danger. Your heart races, your breathing gets shallow, your muscles tense up, you're having a physical response to an imaginary threat. So you need to send your brain physical evidence that you're safe. Deep, slow breathing, relaxing your shoulders, unclenching your jaw, you're literally teaching your nervous system, hey, we're okay. Look, we can breathe deeply, we can relax our muscles, we're not running from predators. This isn't just feel-good advice, this is rewiring your brain's threat detection system at the neurological level. Here's what becomes possible when you start teaching your brain that you're safe. Instead of waking up already braced for impact, you wake up curious about what the day might bring. That's not toxic positivity. That's just not assuming disaster is inevitable. When someone doesn't text you back immediately, instead of creating 17 different scenarios where they hate you, you just wait for them to text you back. Because most of the time, people are just busy. When you make a mistake at work, instead of spiraling into, I'm going to get fired, I'll never find another job, I'll end up homeless, you think, well, that wasn't ideal. What can I learn from this, and how do I prevent it next time? You start noticing things you've been missing, like how your coffee tastes, how the sunlight looks coming through your window, how good it feels when your pet is happy to see you. These aren't small things. These are the moments that actually make up most of your life, but your threat-scanning brain has been too busy to notice them. One feels like constantly carrying a heavy backpack filled with imaginary emergencies. The other feels like setting that backpack down and realizing you don't need to carry it everywhere. Your relationships change too. When you're not constantly scanning for signs that people are upset with you or planning to leave, you can actually be present with them. You can enjoy their company instead of performing for their approval. And here's something beautiful that happens. When you stop radiating that anxious energy, people actually want to be around you more. Anxiety is contagious, but so is calm. You're allowed to retrain your brain. You don't have to accept, I'm just an anxious person as your permanent identity. Here's how to start teaching your brain that you're safe. Every morning, before you check your phone, before you start the day's worry marathon, spend two minutes taking inventory of what's actually fine right now. Not what might go wrong later, but what's actually okay in this moment. Your breath is working. You have a roof over your head. Your heart is beating. Start there. Throughout the day, when you catch your brain fortune-telling or catastrophizing, try this. Thank you, brain, for trying to protect me. I see that you're worried about specific thing. Let's check the actual facts here. You're not dismissing your brain. You're redirecting it. Like a parent with a child who's afraid of monsters under the bed. You don't say, don't be ridiculous. You say, I understand you're scared. Let's look under the bed together and see what's really there. Before bed, instead of reviewing everything that went wrong or could go wrong tomorrow, review three things that went right today. They don't have to be big things. Your lunch tasted good. Someone smiled at you. You made it through another day. You're training your brain to notice that most of life is actually pretty okay. And here's the advanced technique. Start practicing gratitude for boring normal moments. Your brain thinks normal is dangerous because normal used to be rare, but normal is actually the goal. Normal means no one's chasing you. Normal means you're safe. If you've been feeling like you're broken for thinking this way, you're not broken. You're just human with a really good alarm system that needs some updated software. Just because something is familiar doesn't mean it's healthy. Anxiety might feel normal to you because you've lived with it so long, but comfortable and healthy are two different things. You're not weak for wanting to feel peaceful. You're not naive for wanting to enjoy your life without constant dread. These aren't unrealistic expectations. This is how your nervous system is supposed to function when it's not stuck in survival mode. Here's the permission you've been waiting for. You don't have to be ready for every possible disaster. You don't have to have a plan for every worst case scenario. You don't have to carry the weight of every imaginary future problem. You can trust that you'll handle things as they come up, because you've been handling things your whole life. Not perfectly, but adequately. And adequate is actually pretty amazing when you think about it. Your brain has been trying so hard to protect you that it's been protecting you from your own life. It's time to gently let it know. Thank you for caring so much about keeping me safe. Now let me show you what safe actually looks like. Real peace doesn't come from having all the answers or controlling every outcome. It comes from trusting your ability to handle whatever shows up. 
and spending most of your mental energy in the present moment instead of in imaginary futures. Your brain thinks you're still in danger, but you can teach it you're safe. Not through positive thinking or pretending problems don't exist, but through evidence. Present moment, physical, actual evidence that right now in this moment, you're okay. If this resonated with you and you want to keep exploring how to create more peace in your mind, I've written an ebook that goes deeper into this work. You can check it out in the description. If you felt this instead of just hearing it, comment, I'm safe below. Let's practice giving our brains some new data to work with.